Welcome everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Spiro with a brief but very disturbing update regarding COVID-1984. Unfortunately, things have escalated since my last report. I've been noticing a debate on social media concerning mandatory vaccination and whether uh, whenever this subject arises, many people are quick to jump to the conclusion that here in the US, for example, that Trump will not mandate the COVID vaccine. The thing is, is he doesn't have to. It will much more likely be enforced on a local state level. Case in point, Virginia's health commissioner just announced on Friday in an interview that he intends to mandate the shot once it becomes available for all residents. Virginia's health commissioner says he plans to mandate a coronavirus vaccine when it's made available to the public. A bill being considered during this ongoing special session would allow people to opt out, at least some folks. WFXR's Capitol Bureau reporter Jackie DeFusco breaks it all down. If you presumably still are the commissioner of health when a vaccine is made available to the public, do you intend on mandating it? Uh, yes. Commissioner of Health Dr. Norman Oliver says he strongly opposes a bill that would allow people with a religious opposition to opt out of an otherwise required COVID-19 vaccine. It's killing people now. We don't have a treatment for it. And if we develop a vaccine that can um, prevent it from spreading in the community, we will save hundreds and hundreds of lives. Currently under state law, only people with a medical exemption could refuse a mandate. Dr. Oliver says he doesn't know what the punishment would be for noncompliance. I think the overwhelming majority of people would in fact um, respond well. A new poll suggests more than one in three Americans aren't interested in getting a coronavirus vaccine. Though health officials say it will be safe, the speed at which it's being developed has spooked some Virginians. Chesterfield mother of three, Kathleen Madeira says for her, it's a matter of medical choice. This is not a Republican or Democrat issue. It's not a pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine issue. Um, for me, it's an issue of being able to assess each vaccine for myself and my family one at a time. Dr. Oliver says in the case of the coronavirus, public health should take precedent over choice. He shouldn't actually be the one person to make a decision for all of Virginians. In that news report, it mentions the Virginia Public Health Commissioner opposes a bill that would allow religious exemptions to the vaccine. Recently, the Pope himself weighed in on the issue and stated that he backs a universal COVID vaccination for all, saying it shouldn't only be rich nations who have access to this experimental shot. And I would agree to that to a large extent or a certain extent, you know, for example, if people want to have access to the vaccine, okay, then they should have access to it regardless of where they live. But I believe that people should not be forced. And in my view, the Pope weighing in on this is a move that is meant to reinforce the elimination of the religious exemption uh, to make it even more difficult to legally refuse the vaccination. Although some church leaders have urged Catholics to reject the COVID vaccine, uh, the ones that are developed using cell lines from aborted fetal tissues from aborted babies. Now, in the previously mentioned local news report, the health commissioner stated that he wasn't sure what the penalties would be for those who refused the mandated shot. But in Nashville, Tennessee, a city councilwoman recommended attempted murder charges for those who refused to wear a mask. In Greece, strict penalties for those who violate the penal provisions for the spread of infectious diseases are now being enforced, and violators could spend up to life in prison for the most extreme circumstances relating to violations of the coronavirus quarantine. In Australia, police raided a man's home and removed him from his family by force and forced him into quarantine because he refused to take a COVID blood test at a checkpoint. Do you see how quickly this is escalating? Attempted murder charges, life in prison, and police forcibly removing people from their homes? And uh, the vaccine isn't even here yet. You know, all of this for a virus with a 99 plus percent survival rate. A virus that a renowned European scientist claims was engineered in a Chinese lab. He also stated that this, uh, that an effective vaccine was unlikely. And this is according to Italian professor Giuseppe Trito, who is no conspiracy theorist. He is internationally renowned and respected expert in biotechnology and nanotechnology. He is also the president of the World Academy of Biomedical Sciences and Technologies, which is an institution that was founded under UNESCO. He said the exact same thing that Professor Francis Boyle said three separate times when I had him on my show. 
that the virus was genetically engineered. Both of those experts believe that the virus leaked from the Level 4 bioweapons lab in Wuhan, China. It has come out since then that the U.S. was funding this research there in Wuhan, China, previously funding it at the University of North Carolina. Then a moratorium was placed on that research, so then they moved the program to Wuhan, China. This is on record. Dr. Tony Fauci's agency under President Obama was funding this research. Now they're being they're blaming, you know, are justifying the lockdowns due to this outbreak. Now, I personally think that it may have been released intentionally. You know, for those of you who believe that there is a virus, uh, at the World Military Games in Wuhan, China in October late last year. Now, the reason I believe this uh, should be investigated further is because of the timing, the same day that Event 201 took place, and the location, Wuhan, China, which is widely, you know, we're told is ground zero of this outbreak. Not to mention that many of the athletes who participated in the games in Wuhan, China, got very ill upon returning home. And also because of the pre-packaged agenda uh, that is attached to this crisis that we are seeing roll out very quickly. It takes years to develop the infrastructure to support, for example, central bank digital currencies, the cashless society that is being rolled out right now, not to mention the biometric IDs and the biometric passports, etc. Uh, this takes a long time to put together this infrastructure. This isn't just something that is rolled out overnight over a weekend because of a crisis, okay? Now, here is, is an example of the problem, reaction, solution, Hegelian dialectic taking place right now. Like, for example, the controlled demolition of global social and economic systems uh, to then roll out this cashless society and transhumanism and global governance, which is all included under the World Economic Forum's Great Reset and Fourth Industrial Revolution and attached to the United Nations Agenda 21. And I will remind you all right now that the World Economic Forum and the United Nations, not to mention the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the CDC from the U.S. and China, vaccine manufacturers, the media, central banks. I mean, these were all the players that participated in Event 201 that took place the exact same day that the World Military Games took place in uh, the opening ceremonies there in Wuhan, China, where 110 different nations all uh, participated, nearly 10,000 military athletes, and this does not include the uh, support personnel that would have accompanied, uh, you know, these kind of delegations. The COVID-19 crisis has shown us that our old systems are not fit anymore for the 21st century. Now is the historical moment, the time, not only to fight severe virus, but to shape the system for the need for the post-corona era. The Great Reset is a welcome recognition that this human tragedy must be a wake-up call. As you rightly say, it is imperative that we reimagine, rebuild, redesign, reinvigorate and rebalance our world. But these are unprecedented times. Every person on the planet has been impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. Our world came to a standstill and it became clear that we did not have the uh, answer or the mechanisms to address such an unprecedented global threat. We have a golden opportunity to seize something good from this crisis. Its unprecedented shockwaves may well make people more receptive to big visions of change a global crises like pandemics and climate change know no borders and highlight just how interdependent we are as one people sharing one planet. History would look at this crisis as the great opportunity for reset. Secondly, we know the digital economy is the big winner of this crisis. We have a choice to remain passive, which would lead to, an, to the amplification of many of the trends we see today. Polarization, nationalism, racism, ultimately increased social unrest and conflicts. But we have another choice. We can build a new social contract, particularly integrating the next generation. We can change our behavior to be in harmony with nature again. And we can make sure that the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution are best utilized to provide us with better lives. In short, we need a great reset. 
we are witnessing the end of an era, in my opinion. I think it's apparent for everybody. And the dawn of a new digitalized system of control, which will be the cherry on top of the international surveillance state control grid. People often ask, well, if this is a bioweapon, then why is the survival rate so high? Well, as you can see, they clearly didn't need to kill millions in order to control billions. Look at 9-11. 3,000 people died, and it forever changed the world, thanks to a well-organized and weaponized fear campaign driven by the sold-out media. Of course, millions have died in the wake of 9-11 and the perpetual wars that remain until this day. And yes, depopulation is the end game goal. These social engineers are eugenicists at their core, and I'm concerned that a more deadly virus may be intentionally released as we approach what could potentially be the perfect storm as the vaccine arrives, as the U.S. presidential selections take place, as we enter flu season to reinforce that fear and justify the vaccine mandates. We've heard Bill Gates warn of uh, Pandemic 2 and you know all of this second wave narrative that has been swirling and being propagandized for months. And yes, the last part of this report is uh, mainly my analysis, but it's based on history. It's based on facts. It's, it's based on what we are seeing take place. And putting together the pieces of the puzzle uh, is certainly necessary right now because it certainly appears that we are following a script. You know, feel free to chime in with your thoughts below. We all need to uh, analyze what is taking place right now because the window of opportunity to prepare and resist is closing. The amount of tyranny we will live under is the exact amount we will accept and put up with and tolerate. We must resist COVID-1984 like our life depends on it because there is a good chance that it does. I'm Spiro. Stay tuned for more. Be sure to follow me on BitChute, Twitter, Parler, all of those because this channel may not be around much longer. And you can always find my work at activistpost.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to share this.